North Korea sends engineering troops to occupy territories of Ukraine. North Korea will send military construction and engineering forces to participate in reconstruction works in occupied Donetsk Oblast as early as July 2024. South Korean TV network TV Chosun reported this. TV Chosun reported, citing a South Korean government official, that South Korea anticipates North Korea will deploy a large-scale engineering force to occupied Donetsk Oblast as early as July 2024 to assist in rebuilding infrastructure in the occupied city of Donetsk. According to the report, the North Korean military operates 10 engineering brigades and TV Chosun estimated that deploying three or four of these brigades to occupy parts of Ukraine could earn North Korea up to 115 million US dollars annually in unspecified foreign currency from Russia. The Institute for the Study of War pointed out that Russia seems to be fostering a coalition of friendly states with historically close ties to the Soviet Union, such as North Korea and Vietnam, to support the basis of an alternative world order. While the Institute for the Study of War has not seen any reports suggesting that North Korean military personnel intend to engage in combat operations in Ukraine, it did note that North Korean engineering support could allow Russian combat forces to focus on frontline operations and help expand military infrastructure and defensive fortifications in occupied parts of Ukraine. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that the agreement between Russia and the North Korea demonstrated the growing coherence between authoritarian states and underlined the importance of democracies speaking with one voice. Michael Carpenter, Senior Director for European Affairs at the US National Security Council, has stated that Russian leader Vladimir Putin's last visit to North Korea demonstrates Russia's desire to build a coalition with other countries, including North Korea, Iran, Syria, and, to some extent, China. Carpenter noted that this will not help Russia in its confrontation with the entire democratic world, which continues to provide strong support to Ukraine. An apparent coup attempt in Bolivia has subsided, with President Luis Arce asserting his authority over the country's military. Earlier, troops led by Army General Commander Juan José Zuniga had stormed the presidential palace and taken up positions in the square outside. News reports indicated a tank slammed the palace doors. But within hours, Zuniga urged the soldiers to withdraw, after leaders from around the world blasted the army's actions as illegal. Arce urged citizens to take to the streets to defend the country's democracy from an apparent coup attempt, after troops seized control of a central square in La Paz which houses government buildings. I am your captain, and I order you to withdraw your soldiers, and I will not allow this insubordination," Arce told Zuniga. We need the Bolivian people to mobilize and organize themselves against this coup d'état and in favor of democracy, Arce said in a video message filmed at the Great House of the People, the official presidential residence in Bolivia's de facto capital of La Paz. Flanked by members of his cabinet, Arce declared, we cannot allow, once again, attempted coups to claim Bolivian lives. Long live the people of Bolivia. Long live democracy. The ministers shouted, thrusting their left fists into the air. Long live our president, Luis Arce. Zuniga, who was dismissed as commander of the Bolivian army just a day earlier, was later detained and seen being forced into a police vehicle, according to local media. His current whereabouts are unknown. Bolivian Defense Minister Edmundo Novillo told a news conference the armed forces were under control. Bolivia's Attorney General's office said it has launched a criminal investigation against Zuniga and all the other participants involved in the incident. Bolivia has a long history of political instability, including military coups, and the failed takeover comes as the landlocked South American country of about 12 million people struggles with a spiraling economic crisis that has sparked street protests. Está bien que los paquetes. Este es solo puta facho de mierda.